Today I was listening to a talk by Jiddu Krishnamurti. And at one point, he was talking about how the me, or the egoic self, how we construct a me from the variety of different memories, likes and dislikes, preferences, sensations, our traumas, political opinions, what groups we identify with, various such concepts and patterns of thinking. It is this coalescing of these different facets of conscious experience that we give the name me. Yet the experiencing that happens that gives this name me, who is that? Who is the one who comes up with the name me? And that's not what I will focus on in this video, but it's something to keep in mind. If you'd like to go into that a bit deeper, that is a topic that we focus in my workshop at Gulchfest that I gave last year. I can link to that in the description. Today, what I have in mind is this constructing we do of an ego, I, me. And not just what is done from one person to the other for their respective experiences, but also the ideas we tell each other about who we are, how we are, what we are, how much of this me are we getting from the feedback we receive from others? In this vein, I had the thought about the experience we have with social media. You know, the talk I listened to that I brought up at the beginning here was from 1972. Krishnamurti did not live to see the day that we had such powerful tools for digital connection in place. And I wonder what he would have thought about social media. But I won't wonder too fervently here, because I want to talk about some of the thoughts that I've had. In particular, what came to mind was that when we create a profile on one of these networks, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, the whole variety of networks, we carefully curate an image of this person that we are. Indeed, what is one's social media profile if not but a selected coalescing of likes and dislikes, affiliations with various groups, asserting what identity one has, reminiscing about selected memories, the profile that one creates on one of these social media accounts is in essence this very constructed self that Krishnamurti was talking about.
And I thought about how often, or pretty much every time, I release one of these videos. There's always a good bit of fretting and fussing about what will people think of it. Did I say enough? Did I say too little? Did I say it in the best way? Was my mustache crooked? Did I have a little bit of Rocco's hair on my shirt? Was my hair fixed right? And every single thing that you could worry about, especially for one as temperamentally anxious such as myself. But I thought, isn't it interesting how invariably this worry seems emotionally to be not so much about what will they think about this product I've created, this talk that I've filmed, but it stems at a visceral level to will I be approved as who I am? Will they really understand me? And the question I really want us to think about when it comes to the media that we publish, not just in the form of our social media, but every single thing that we place in the public eye, the question, who is the me to which these instances refer? And how can we, from the small sample of what others see of us, really be able to make an estimation of what they think about who we are? <laughs> how can I, when someone expresses a political view to me, or shows me a picture, or even makes a certain joke, or has a certain preference. And even from a combination of these features or these aspects, these snippets that have been shared, how can I truly know who that person is? And from those bits of myself that I've shared, how can one truly know who I am? And how curious is it that we so carefully curate these profiles? In fact, I must say that I'm not a negative person in my thoughts on social media. I view it neutrally as a tool for connection that has th its advantages and disadvantages. But one feature that I've noticed is when you have the power to manage this appearance of what others see of you, how does that turn into an obsession? And maybe it's not a overt or directly noticeable obsession, but the more energy we give into these thoughts and actions that are directed towards curating the image of ourselves that others see, doesn't that get us in the habit of thinking about that? In other words, could it be that these social media platforms breed an excess of self-consciousness. This is something we can reflect on together. Consider how it, the social media platform affects your life and if it plays this kind of role. And of course, as social creatures, we have deeply ingrained in us a, maybe not a desire, perhaps an instinct, but 
we could say there's a wonderful feeling when we have social approval. And how quickly does this delightful contentedness when we feel accepted by the group turn into a craving for more, a desire to continue to be accepted. This group of people who I hold in very high regard, it's so important to me that they like me. This person that I so fancy, that I really just, mm, you know, that one, my God. God, I hope that they really like that thing that I said or did. But what about you? Behind those things that you said or did, even if you take and add up everything that you've done through all of your life, well, first of all, there's no way you could have time to share all of that with anyone. And even if you add all that up, does that really make who you are? And so it seems that this fervent desire to be accepted is very much based on whether the image of oneself that has been conveyed will be accepted. And in reflecting on my own life and experience, what's come to mind for me today is perhaps a more accurate way of thinking about this desire to be accepted is when I make a public expression when I produce a form of media or add to the memories and statements in one of these accounts, the question is, what will people think of this specific thing I've said? What will people think of the product that I've created? Because after all, all artists who've been on stage and any one of us who has enjoyed the company of others in a social situation knows that there is a sensible concern for how we'll be received by others. So long as we have a desire to act in a public space. Otherwise, we'd all be holed up as hermits in our own lives, or at least perhaps be sociopathic monsters. <laughs> Now that seems like a whole different topic to get into. The, uh, what is the right amount of concern for what others think of us? And I could go into that in a different video at a different time. But I think we'll rest this current little talk here with that question of how does the constructed self fit in to this social media presentation. In a spontaneous social situation, we don't have so much control over how we'll be perceived by others. But we do our best. We put on our good clothes, fix up our hair and makeup, and act in a way and appear in a way that seems nice. You know, do you like what you see in the mirror? Do you like the sound of what you said? But there's a great deal that we don't have in control in these situations. The me that I've constructed through all of these memories and all of these ideas of who I am, 
a lot of this is stuff that I didn't exactly set out to make myself. And yet we have these selves that we've created with a great deal of control and measure. And that seems to have an influence on the degree of control that we expect when we're not in such a heavily self-curated setting. I wonder to what degree. And I suppose where I want to leave off with this video is this. Who you are is unfathomably deep and will not be found among the likes, the dislikes, the memories, the identities, group affiliations, the names that we give ourselves. All of that springs from this unnameable depth. If you liked this video, subscribe to the channel. You're invited to continue the discussion in the comments below. And if you're interested in what else I've been up to, follow the links in the description. And thank you for joining us.